Thank you for joining us. I wanted uh, to speak to you about the work you've done on women's rights. If you can first talk about what is fundamentally wrong with religion and the question of women. The Bible um, and the Quran are handbooks for the subjugation of women. Um, they lay all the blame um, for evil and sin on women and in the New Testament um, it demands that women be subservient and be in silence and we um, know the role of the Quran in oppressing women and um, we have we need a women's revolution from religion because it's the principal enemy of women's rights um, it sanctifies the idea that women are inferior and sinful and um, we cannot uh, move forward while um, people uh, believe literally in the Bible or the Quran. But um, I suppose people will say that uh, some women find religion quite liberating. Uh, well, I think people can believe whatever they like, but we can look at the damage that religion causes women worldwide. Um, for example, um, reproductive rights in the United States. It's the organized religion, Catholicism, and the fundamentalists that are trying to take away not just abortion rights, which is a right that we won years ago, but the right to contraception. Um, if you cannot control your own body and your own fertility, you can't control anything about your life. And Margaret Sanger you know, said women cannot be free um, until they can determine if and when they become a mother. And most of the patriarchal religions have as their core the control of women and reproduction. Um, that's often, I mean, I think that's sort of the point of, of, of most religions, is to control women. What do you say to uh, women who say, but we're very free and we have all the rights that we need, but you know, and we get that from our religion in a sense. So they're saying that there is freedom in religion for women. Uh, well, um, God, Allah, these are patriarchal concepts and abstracts. And as long as God is male, male is God. And uh, the Bible and the Quran set up a master-slave relationship with God at the top and then man and then woman. And women are held in subjugation under uh, this doctrine. And uh, any freedoms that women have won have been in spite of the Bible, in spite of the Quran, not because of it. It's women who have moved religion forward, not the other way around. Uh, what sort of constraints do you see needed for religion in order to help ensure women have rights and equality? Uh, but secularism would demand that there should be no religion, no doctrine, no dogma in our civil and secular laws. So, of course, we're, I'm anti-theocratic um, and pro-secular uh, government and, uh, you know, ideas held on faith for which there is no evidence or proof should not be in our laws, whether it's creationism or the idea that uh, there's a a human person at conception, uh, that there's an installment at conception, which is the basis for opposing uh, contraception and abortion, for example. And we just see these casual references in, in the holy texts to covering women that are now giving us uh, burqas, uh, which I think are such a, a terrible symbol of being trapped by religion. Um, circumscribing one's life. It's frightening to me to see women in burqas. Do you think women have a special and an added need to be free from religion? Well, yeah, because religion is, is a male, male religion. Um, with, uh, uh, women cannot be free, I think, while there is religious patriarchal law, law governing our lives. And the history of the women's movement in the West has been the history of um, fighting religion, speaking out in public, although the Bible says you have to be in silence, demanding the right to uh, own property, um, to control of our own children, 
uh, um, to be able to attend universities. All of these reforms in the Western world were vociferously opposed by the churches. It was, they, they were the enemy of the right to vote, and, of, and they are the enemy of women's right to ownership of our own bodies. And we are seeing the same kind of movement now in the Muslim world with women replaying this um, emancipation from religion, having to fight these strictures. And uh, I wish that we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but it's uh, to the great credit of um, women like uh, Taslima Najrin, you, um, Ayan Hussi Ali, and all the other women who are speaking out against the Muslim religion um, at, at the threat of death for their rights. Do you um, see any links between the movements for women freeing themselves from Islam to women freeing themselves from Christianity's rules? And uh, do you see that as universal? Yes, it's universal. It's exactly the same fight. And in fact, the um, Muslim, Christian, and Judaic religions share uh, the same uh, Old Testament uh, texts in common. The Abrahamic religions have a core, common core. So many of the, you know, we see um, what happened to Farhunda. Um, it reminded me of the passage of uh, what happened to Jezebel in the Bible, almost word for word, the same kind of... Uh, obscene violence against women for being seen as um, speaking out. In Fahunda's case, um, you know, reproving an imam. How dare she? Um, when we see women stoned to death, that's right out of the Old Testament. Christians forget that, that they share this in common. You know, there are some that will say uh, women's rights that you fought for are Western, they're not universal. What would your response be to that? Um, I agree with you that these are universal rights, um, these are human rights and civil liberties, and um, um, it, it isn't a, a culture that can impose oppression. It isn't a cultural right to deny uh, the right to you know, life, liberty, education, um, freedom of movement, freedom of association, freedom of expression to women because of religion. That's um, dictatorship that's uh, uh, just totally unacceptable. Uh, women's rights are human rights. Thank you very much.